In this episode, we are going to look at the issues that can arise for parents. First, let's start with new parents. Often in the run-up to the new arrival, all the focus is on the baby, on painting the nursery, getting the clothes, find the perfect travel system. Well, this can put pressures and additional stress on individuals as well as couples. In previous episodes, we've talked about the need to not only focus on mental health when a crisis arises. Having a sustained approach helps us to build resilience. This resilience is something you, your partner, and your relationship will need when baby number one arrives. Nothing will prepare you for the sharpest learning curve in your life, when you have a child and you become a parent. Not only do you have to learn how to care for another human being, but you will also physically and emotionally be pushed to the max. The lack of sleep, the lack of personal space, all the things that you enjoyed doing before, suddenly you can't do anymore, and that can have a toll. Of course, I should say as a mother that once it happens and baby arrives, you quickly discover that it's the most amazing thing on earth and you wouldn't change it for the world. However, being a parent isn't always easy and it's important people allow themselves to feel what they're feeling and talk about it without thinking that they're a failure. It is really, really important to build up your resilience and have the supports in place. Postnatal depression is a lot more common than you think. It varies in degrees of severity, but it is experienced by women and men every day. One way of proactively preparing is to assume that you're going to get postnatal depression. Then, if you don't get it, it's a bonus. By looking at it this way, you'll have given thought to the supports you need and have them in place in case the need to use them arises. Personally, I had my therapist on speed dial when I was pregnant. I was like, look, I'm coming to therapy during pregnancy. I have no doubt I'll need to continue when the baby arrives as well, because I needed that emotional support. It's a transition. We talk about moving house, changing job, coming out of a relationship, being the most stressful events in life. But having a baby is a much greater transition. Becoming a parent is a huge, complicated life transition that alters the person you once were. The process even has its own name, matrosense. Often mothers feel guilty to complain about how tired they are, how they feel their body is no longer their own since the baby has arrived, or how awkward they feel in the early days about how to care for their baby because this was something they wanted. However, even if it was a planned pregnancy, a new parent is bound to feel exhausted and may also grieve for the life they had before they became a parent. All these feelings are valid and need to be expressed to someone who will listen and provide an empathetic space for the parent to process their feelings. We must also be mindful of birth trauma. If you have experienced birth trauma, it is very important that you get support. Maybe you didn't have the birth that you had hoped for, and maybe you did not feel in control of your birth because there were complications and did not feel heard or consulted in the birthing process. A lot of women don't process their birth trauma. A lot of dads don't process how it felt for them to be in that place where they didn't know what was happening and maybe thought that they were going to lose their partner and their child. And then everything is fine. Everyone goes home thinking they're going to live happily ever after, but there was trauma. Just because the mother is deemed physically healthy and the child is deemed physically healthy, that does not mean they're emotionally and psychologically healthy because of the traumatic experience they both had. Birth trauma needs space to be processed with the help of an experienced therapist so that as a parent, you can heal from the traumatic experience, bond with your child, and resume your parenting journey. And of course, we don't want to neglect parents of older children. Issues and anxieties can arise at any stage of parenting, but for all parents, my advice is that if you can get yourself in a good mental health place, you'll be a better parent because it will inform the way you respond to your child. All parents have been there when you are thinking that there is literally no more fuel in the tank. It's hard to parent if we don't look after ourselves. Therapy can help find ways to develop more capacity, more charge. The more resilience you can develop, the better parent you can be, and the more able you are to respond to your child in a loving, caring, nurturing way. As a bonus, if you take the time for self-care and charge up, you are modeling great habits for your children. If they see you prioritizing your mental health, then they will too. This lays the foundation for your children to live a fuller, balanced, and more authentic life. Ultimately, isn't this what all parents want for their children?